uh, nine weeks. So um, we're going to just crack on with it, really. But um, I'll just do a, a, a quick sort of reminder on a few things uh, and then we'll we'll just all get on with it, I think. Um, so there here is the um, the wall. Um, so this is what we're aiming to do today. So we've got two portraits. We've got the Andrew Segal, though, which is split into four sections. It's actually a really detailed picture when you get up close to it because it's got um, it's kind of I think it's kind of inspired by um, graffiti and things like that because it does look it does have this kind of rough graffiti feel to it and you can see there's um, some uh, song lyrics holy night or something on there um, and then there's some symbols and things. Um, and then when you look at the hands, you look really closely at the hands, you can see there's tons of detail uh, and lots of mark making on there. So I chose that one because it's quite different to some of the ones that we've done before. But we've also had a look at Andrew Segal, those works. So um, if you're doing that one, um, it, it should it should be quite a good challenge. But um, uh, make sure that you're not working too small. Um, so that you can get into that detail and things. So I'll be working on that. I'm going to work on the bit with the hand on it um, this evening, as I've said before. And then, sure. yeah, it's really nice. Actually, it's really different, I think. And then this one um, from Jimmy Law, uh, you can see it's divided up into nine sections. So there's not as many sections as there is perhaps on the ones when we did Venice. Um, but so it gives you a chance, really, you know, if, if you've done one section, it gives you a chance to try another one. Um, but it also means that we're more likely to get all the sections in so that we can have a completed joint uh, project. Um, obviously, this is the last week. So um, over the next couple of weeks, um, if you su submit your work onto Facebook, then um, what I can do is start putting it together on Photoshop and I'll post it as we go just like we did in the summer all right um yeah yeah so if i have a look uh, have a look at my desk so if we remember on here i um last time i created a sort of textured background to work on top of and i use things like tape and newspaper uh, and pva and then i scraped with a palette knife over the top i scraped some white paint. I had a little bit of blue in this case, just so that you could um, actually get a, a better look on the screen. But we ended up with this really lovely surface. And I talked about how, you know, we're breaking the ice and really creating something that's already kind of um, ready to have some marks, more marks added to it. So that was the background there. And then I did this uh, Francoise okay. Neely. Uh, yeah over the top so you can just over here you can see the newspapers and tape coming through but again we've got little bits of texture on the surface and as I progress through this picture I added thicker amounts of paint and at one point I was even just taking it straight out of the tube and adding it onto the uh, top surface but the nice thing about doing something like this is that you get the chance to keep layering those colors on top of each other to create you know this sense of depth in the colors themselves so that was a lot of fun too um and then other ones other things that we've been doing is looking at all right as well so we did some uh, I gave you a challenge to do your own version of Paul Wright with the sweeping brush strokes. And this is the first one that we did uh, before that in acrylics uh, on the yeah. blue background, which is down there. You can see that. So when we're doing uh, a copy of an artist's work um, this time, you may decide that you want to go a bit bigger, particularly if you've got something detailed like this. So a nice uh, way of getting something a little bit bigger is to put your dots on the corner of your picture once you cut it out um, and then join those lines up. Do it lightly on the inside. 
um, because essentially what we're going to do is enlarge the square a bit so what you do is you put your ruler diagonally through don't have to draw a line through I'm just doing that for this so this middle diagonal line that goes through each corner determines and keeps the proportions of your picture and we've done this a few times so you'll, you'll uh, remember this um, so let's say I want to go quite big Do a diagonal line from uh, where you want it to start and then a vertical line straight up the side and that will give me that box in the correct proportions so this isn't quite I think a rectangle a sorry a square it's seven and a half by seven so it's just a really quick way of getting the, the, the right proportions to the right size of the, of the picture and enlarging it um, and then what you can do and you'll see that we've done this before as well but you can divide the picture up into quarters and draw each section um, one section at a time um, so that then you're again you're breaking the image down into even smaller or into smaller sections that you can then draw into your enlarged version so if I'm going to do that I need to divide it into uh, two into half that and that of course does take a bit of measurement if you've enlarged it Oops, let me go there there and there now that cross through the middle represents the same squares that I've got on here so that means now I can work out where everything is going to go uh, within um, within my picture frame that I've just drawn out. So that section will be enlarged into this box here and so on like that. Uh, always remember if you're drawing something start, um, I always say now uh, start with the largest um, sections of your picture before you go down into the detail. Um, because it helps you get all the shapes and things in the right place so that you can draw it more accurately and then your painting ends up being great at the end. Okay. So um, once you've done that, you may choose to put um, like a background colour in. Uh, uh, this uh, picture that we've chosen from Jimmy Law, um, you know, this obviously it looks like something you might decide to put purple in this purpley plum color in the background before then applying um, these on top these uh, lighter and darker areas over the top with this uh, with some of these lighter colors you need to obviously add some um, white I've got titanium here and the white is more opaque so it will sit really well on the top of a slightly darker background so with this one, James, excuse yeah. me, would, would you do the purple first then on that one? I think possibly, yeah. Yeah, because um even when you put when you put the white on top, you're gonna get a bit of the purple coming through, aren't you? But that you know, it won't be so um so much purple that it'll um change the picture. It's lots of pale blue and a lot of creamy colour. Yeah, yeah. Not just a white blob when you look at it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a white sort of um section that's been cut out as isn't it yeah of the purple in a way so it's, it's a negative a negative chin. space sorry it's interesting when you think it's a chin yeah yeah that's the same one i've got here isn't it um, is there one next to it isn't it uh oh yeah 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 you've got like the jaw think, haven't I've, you that, that, that one that's the, the one only one that was left i think oh right okay oh. Oh, well, yeah, you know, it doesn't. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you're going to do, um, if you just choose the one you want to do, um, essentially, because there's quite a few people doing it. Um, I so. quite like it now, and I've printed it. Yeah. And I would just like to say, that drawing Elvis from one of those things. Yeah. One of those people. Yeah. I found much easier. I don't know why. Mm. 
Whether it's because you think, well, it did not matter that much. I, I'm not sure. I think just a bit better. Or, I yeah, I think there's just, I think there's a lot more kind of um, obvious shapes in the picture that you what, pick. What it is. Cause I yeah. Because you've got lots of, away. you've got lots of um, like paint strokes, brush strokes on there. And when you're drawing those shapes in, you can see those shapes more kind of clearly. And when you put I them all together, beautiful. yeah, when you put them all together, it makes the picture that you're after, doesn't it? And they're frame and batching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the other one with the glasses, isn't it, Elvis, with the sunglasses on? I, I like doing that. Yeah. But I've been doing two giraffes for a little girl, so. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, finished, done, framed. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Right, and I've got to find out to do that purple one. Thank you. I think we've just had to say that I think we've covered loads. We we have done. We have covered a lot. Yeah. A lot done. Think about it. We've done inks. We've done charcoal. Um, what else have we done? <laughs> so just pencil. Yeah, we've, we've done, done pencil loads. as well. Shady, yeah, we yeah. have done tons. Right, and some of the paintings that have been coming through on Facebook, I've just been looking at looking at them again this evening. There's been loads, been... isn't there? Loads have come up on there. It's been brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you. I think we've, we've really done, yeah. done a lot. Yeah. Govinda's got um a portrait of a son that's been accepted. <laughs> By a son. So. <laughs> and yeah. that every night. Just seen they've been approved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then there she can't do the other one, so you'll be doing your other one next. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think they're great. I think they're great. Right. My friends asked me to do her dog for her. Oh, yeah. This is her doggy. How are you getting on with that? But oh, what wow. I did yesterday was I've just drawn, in, drawn her out, so I've got to try that. <sighs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Are you, um, 15th birthday, what, watercolour or acrylic? I don't know yet. I'm decided. <laughs> so, um, I've, I've drawn it out by hand. Mm. And then I also did another copy really quickly, just using. Wow, that's going to be lovely. Yeah, she said, do whatever you want, whatever size. I want it for Andy's 50th birthday. But I've never done a commission before. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this will be my Easter holiday project. If you keep a copy of it, you know, like um, of the outline, you can do a few, can't you, until you... Yeah, well, that's why I did a quick carbon copy as well. I thought, yeah. I'll mess it up. At least then I've got to draw it from scratch again. I can go well, yeah, it. exactly, yeah. Carry on, even though I'll be very bad. Well, you could look up, you know, you could look up a few um, artists that have done similar things, couldn't you, as well, and maybe use that as a bit of inspiration for... You yeah. know, getting the paint down and things. How yeah, bit what's of... your recommendation for fur? Fur? What? Fur, doing fur, yeah. Oh, right. Um, well, there's there's patches, aren't there, of colour on, on the on the dog. Is that right? I can't... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so where those patches sort of meet in the middle, you know, the white and then the brown, you know, you yeah. can overlap with little bits of... With little lines if you see what i mean okay so sort of put, put your color down then when it goes yeah. over it then put, put, your little bit. yeah put your fat flat color down and then work back over the top with some fine lines but don't vary don't like really do them heavily do them very subtly because that was even if you do it really subtly or still they'll still show up yeah okay. and then you know you'll get a sense of the fur that way even on fine fur like um like with that dog Okay, we'll okay. give it a go. I'll yeah. let you know. Yeah. Good luck. The holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have to be ready till June, so I've got plenty of attempts. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not a person, not like a binder. I'm not that brave. <laughs> <laughs> Who dares I've win, Zay I've, <laughs> I've done a few on, uh, on a slate as well, which is quite... Um, All right. Yeah. You didn't have to stocks. On a, on um on a, on the slate coasters and she was thrilled to bits when she when she came in. Oh yeah, happy yeah. And her friends, 
sent me. You could find him at a local. Friend to be wrong, I don't know. No, she's got them out still. The dogs are no longer with us, so she's quite sad. But she's got a cockapoo now. She's driving a mad game. <laughs> <laughs> Want to watch that program, Dogs be um, Puppies Behaving Badly or Very Badly? Have you seen that? Okay. No. That's really good. Me and yeah. Sophie watch it every week. It's, it's called, uh... called Puppies Behaving Badly. Oh, well, it's, it was called Puppies Behaving Badly this week, um, mm. but usually it's Dogs Behaving Very Badly. And it has all these <laughs> tricks. All these... It just likes the washing. It's forever got washing. Whether it's in the machine, it just watches oh, yeah. the machine, or it's grabbing it. Yeah, my Jumping dog, my dog likes to grab to. a sock. My dog does. <laughs> he grabs your socks and runs off with them and thinks, you know, try to get you to chase you. Just to keep the blue door shut because he pinches all the toilet bowls. <laughs> It's certainly got attitude. Oh, yeah. When uh, Scout was a puppy, she used to do that if she could get hold of it. Get hold of some loo roll and tear it up into pieces. Yeah, I do. They spring us before, and I think they were quite well behaved. She's not used to this one. <laughs> They're too loud. He puts things on Facebook, and I think. How is it always uh, for a soft sense? Mm -hmm. Every time she finds the slippers or socks, she will run away with them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've made the right pair for them. I've not mixed enough of it. It's a nice bit silly. That's not really right anymore. I think I've chosen a quite difficult one, Jamie, this time. Yeah, there's a lot of detail in these. I but think, um, yeah. as you can see, what? well, I don't know if you can see mine. Can you see it? Yeah. I've, so I'm breaking it down. Feet. Yeah, and I'm look, breaking it down into sections first, like this. So there's another section here. I'm going to put that in, you see. Um, I'm going the other way around. I'm doing a smaller version of it this time. I thought if it's a smaller, I'll finish it off quickly. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it might do. actually work out quite well because uh, you'll find yourself doing much more light layering of, of colour, I think, when you mm. when you get to that stage. Let's see. Yeah. It's what worth I it, achieve with this one. Giving it a go, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um we're just drawing out the uh outlines well actually i've already done that on this this half um so this is monday evening um and uh so i started off um just concentrating on the hand um that was the most interesting part of the picture to begin with anyway and I'm uh, using uh, a few different browns on here, such as um, Venetian red um, and uh, burnt umber and uh, a little bit of white, perhaps with uh, some of the other bits. And then uh, I'm just changing the tone with the white uh, to get me started on putting down some of the texture. So to begin with, I was thinking, um, oh my gosh, there's actually a lot more here than um, I realized. But um, I did kind of expect that. But um, once you actually start doing something, it seems a little bit overwhelming. But um, you see, I've grabbed a little bit of a, kind of a pinkish uh, red and I've started to put in some yellows on here as well. Um, the second day, I actually found it a little bit more straightforward than on perhaps on this first session. I'm doing this copy of Segaldo, uh, Andrew Segaldo's painting um but it turned out to be ever such a lot of fun and once i got into the flow of um painting this picture um it was it was very nice to do um so on this here i've added uh, some brown and uh, ultramarine uh, blue so burnt umber and ultramarine to make this kind of um 
what uh, could be a substitute black. I do end up using a bit of black later on, but I always start off with using uh, this mixture of blue and brown to make a nice dark colour. So on Segaldo's paintings, you you will you will see that um, on this particular painting anyway, there are areas of really dark um, outlines, but um, they look quite harsh at the moment. They can be softened down um, as we progress. Um, so you can see me now map it, mapping out and putting in some of these um, different colours. And I did find myself switching between colours uh, quite uh, rapidly um, as uh, the painting uh, went on during those couple of hours that we were working on it. So um, I, I tend to work, um, I, I spot an area I want to work on, I go and get the colour and then I put it in, then I spot another area and I work on that area and I continuously keep uh, mixing uh, different colours. Uh, the idea really um, of working like this is because the more you're mixing the colours, the more variety you're going to get in there as well. Um, so this is for me, that was just me talking to a student about a specific piece of work uh, or section. Um, so um, on here you can see me adding uh, some more yellows. I got myself a little bit of yellow ochre as I spotted some yellows in there as well. Uh, just a note on the, the starting point for this is putting down those um, washes of colour underneath. The back of the palm, as you can see in the picture, if you can just about see that, uh, the back of the palm is a little bit dark, so it's back, uh, darker wash, just there, colour or glaze of colour to get me started as a base to work over. The blues, I've used um, a Fatalio uh, turquoise and a little bit of the ultramarine uh, colours mixed in together um, to create that kind of zingy blue. So blue being the opposite um, to an orangey colour. So you've got these orangey kinds of browns and things and reds in there, which um, contrast really well with the, with the blues of that um, eye tattoo or eye symbol on the back of the hand there. So a lot of the colours are quite, you know, harsh at the moment, but as you start building them up, they become much more uh, subtle uh, as you start to blend and mix them in together. The secret I found, one of the secrets anyway, is not to be overly precious about each mark that you put down on the paper. The nice thing about the acrylics is you can work straight back over those marks, correct them, um, change them, alter them, whatever you want to call it. Um, but all that I think adds to the depth in the mark making that you're putting on because you're layering the different colours on top of each other as you go. Um, I found it quite useful actually to have um, the picture on the screen that I was painting and the one that I'm looking at um, purely because you get um, a little bit more contrast in the picture um, on the screen uh, as opposed to a print which is kind of has this kind of white sheen to it uh, on the screen it has a bit more contrast but also you get to see a picture from a little bit further away when you see it on a screen. So it's almost like you get a snapshot from a distance and you can spot things sometimes that um, you can adjust and add in to your painting as you're working on it. So at this stage, I'm uh, built up quite a lot of colour and you can see me hopping backwards and forwards really quickly, between, <laughs> not just because I speeded it up, but you can see me hopping backwards and forwards between the colours uh, and the, the palette and the painting. And I'm really starting to add lots of layers of um, colours and working quite rapidly because I'm in the flow, basically. Um, one thing about me as an artist and as a person is I'm quite forgetful. So I might see one thing as I'm working, particularly on a painting like this, might, might see one bit that I'm working on and then uh, forget what I've done and uh, want to do something else in an instant. So... Um, uh, when I say flow, I'm literally flowing from one sort of area to another without too much thought, really, just working quite intuitively um, and with a lot of uh, feeling, I suppose. Um, it kind of helps you relax a little bit if you work sometimes just a little bit quicker. 
and uh, it is quite nice to see. You learn a lot about mixing colours by doing this kind of um, mark making. So Segal though has um, done quite a, a, a lot of um, artworks, in the, uh, Andrew Segal though, which you can find on the internet. You can also find a few inter interviews with him on there as well which are quite good to watch to get an insight into how he works but these this particular painting is a there's a series of them where he he um uh, veers away from what he often normally does and um puts in all of these um graffiti symbols and marks like it's something that you would have found that's been drawn over many many times over a long period of time by lots of different people Obviously it all gels as a painting, but you get this sense of age and, um, like we said, graffiti on the picture itself. This bit I really enjoyed doing because uh, it was quite quick and it covered a lot of ground. But I, I didn't mix the black and the white paint together too, um, too vigorously because I just wanted to get this kind of um, effect of the paint being um, layered and put down quite quickly on the surface. And then we add the blacks and the whites on there uh, and those little symbols and the lines coming off the edge of the picture. So it was quite quick actually to build that particular area. So uh, the next day um, I didn't finish off the top and the left hand side of the picture. Um, on Tuesday I decided I really enjoyed doing the face. Uh, so I was going to continue working with that um, on the Tuesday class. Um, so again, what I've done is I've enlarged the picture as I uh, explained earlier on in this video. Um, so I enlarged just half of it so I could fit it onto my uh, sheet of paper. And then I've used, I folded the paper and just used each square to help me map out exactly where the tips of the fingers, the eyes, the beard, um, the ear and so forth go. And then I get out some basic browns and I start filling. Uh, well, this is kind of a warm sort of brown that I'm putting down as backdrop for the colours. And by this stage, I was much more accustomed to this way of working. So um, basically, what I was doing is using the things that I'd learned the day before to help me paint this picture up. A, working really quickly um, and I got into the flow much quicker working in that way and having, um, not being, again, not being too precious about um, colours that I was putting down and just enjoying, enjoying making those marks. And I did have a lot of fun uh, making this if you're doing the other painting, um, I hope you enjoy uh, painting that one as well. Um, I was going to do that one, but then um, somebody else was doing a section of this painting too. And I thought, well, why not? So um, again, like on the last one, I'm using a dark, particularly dark color, which is ultramarine and burnt umber again. Um, to uh, start adding in some tones once I've got um, for some of the darker um, areas so that I could <clears throat> start um, getting some clear edges and things without again being too um, precious about it so just building up um, some structure in there as well as some colour and one of the favourite things I like doing is painting the eye so I'm working on that right now yeah. Um, and as I said, you know, the way that I work is I'll, I'll be working away on something quite intensely and then suddenly I'll see something else and go straight over there and do that. So I end up working broadly across the whole of the picture um, in a way, which is a nice way to work because you can see how everything is kind of slotting together or not, as the case may be, and you can spot things that need changing. So just working on his forehead in between the fingers um, and the paint is now starting to layer uh, quite nicely on top of each other. 
there's still a line between last night's work and Tuesday's work or today's work <laughs> but uh, I do go back into that a little bit later uh, and the nice thing as well is that when you've put down a light or a dark area of colour you can work straight back on top of it with acrylics because as I've said many times before it dries really quickly um, so within a few minutes you can go back to an area and work straight back over the top of it so I'm just adding some highlights and uh, shadows into the nose area bring that forward a little bit as well and then in a short while I start to uh, add a bit of contrast by working back into the background area of the uh, portrait so the hair which um, the artist has used the hair as a kind of a, a ground for adding in lots of symbols and fun in there so the brownie sort of greeny gray greeny gray background um, in there was just a general color that I spotted and I thought that would be really nice to get cracking with um, and then later I add um, the graffiti sort of element, the blues and the cross and everything um, back over the top of that. Uh, at the moment I'm adding, uh, I started did actually switch to a little bit of black and I mixed it with a bit of brown and blue as well. So we've got black, brown and blue all mixed together to help um, add in some of the um, thick lines that show the hair, where the hair is going. So that sort of um, describes the hair, but um, the other thing it does is it gives you a little bit of room above that to start putting in some of that graffiti that he does. So it's really clever how he works. Uh, just here I was talking about how to mix that, um, that blue up on the uh, finger up on the left hand side. Uh, so I use a bit of emerald green. I had a Vitaleo turquoise as well, which was really nice. Um, but I talked about the oranges and the greens um, being, or the oranges and the blues being opposite to each other on there. Um, that was me just talking again about background and how to create that. Okay, so in with a bit more colour. Not necessarily got the right colour there, but um, it doesn't matter because I can, uh, as I do, I work back over the top of it. And I'm doing quite loose brush strokes as well to sort of, um, as I did with the grey area on the other side of the picture. Looking at the photo just now, I can see that there are a bit, there are, it's a bit warmer and a bit darker and more brown and things, but um, I'm not too worried about this. I'm just enjoying the mark making at this point. I can always change it later if I want to. And now you can see me hopping back um, over to the eyebrows and things. And then I thought, right, it's time to get some of these marks in there and things. Um, the red area was, um, I wanted to get that red area in, which is in the photo. I used the dry brush to do that. So the paint without so much water or, or much water at all, you just sort of brush, you drag the brush over the surface and it creates a really lovely dry dry looking effect on the surface of the picture. And you can see straight away pretty much I'm working back over with the dark colours again. So I'm hopping all over the place adding in different bits and pieces that I spot as we progress. White areas over the blacker um, marks that we had earlier on as well. So all in all, a lot of fun. Bits of green in there now. So obviously we could work on this a lot longer, but I feel like I've achieved what I set out to do, which is the likeness of this section of Andrew Segaldo's uh, portrait uh, using this graffiti um, messy sort of style. Loads of fun. Have a go. Yay. Thanks everyone and see you next class. Bye bye.